What is a web browser? A web browser is software that allows you to view web pages. Examples of web browser software include Google Chrome, Apple Safari, Microsoft Edge, previously Microsoft's browser was Internet Explorer, and Mozilla Firefox. As of the making of this video in 2023, Google Chrome is currently the most popular used web browser with 61.8% of people using it, with Apple Safari coming in second with 24.3%. Some people often refer to Google Chrome as just Google, but be careful to not get mixed up between Google the company, Google the search engine, and Google Chrome the web browser. A common wrong answer for what is a web browser is software that gives you the internet. That is incorrect. If you think about your computer, it will most likely already have a web browser installed on it. If your internet goes down, the web browser is still there, so it's not really the web browser that's giving you the internet. I think the reason why people say this is because the vast majority of the time you are using a web browser is to view web pages on the internet. However, web browsers can view web pages that you have saved or created on your local device. When you save a web page, it often saves it as an HTML or HTM file that can be opened by a web browser. If you are learning HTML, and I have a whole bunch of videos that can teach you HTML, link to the playlist in the description, then you will test the web pages you have created offline by using your web browser. Other types of web browsers also exist for specific scenarios. For example, there are mobile versions specifically designed to work on your smartphone. Google Chrome have a mobile version, but there are also others like Samsung Internet or Opera Mini that are popular for mobile devices. Then there are the browsers like the Tor browser that can access the Tor network. It uses a technique called onion routing, which is designed to keep you anonymous when browsing, especially used for communication on the dark web. Now that you know what a web browser is, Let's look at a couple of the features that they offer. When you open a web browser like Google Chrome, it'll look something like this. You'll probably interact with the address bar the most often. That is where you type in the URL or web address of the website you are looking for. You could type in the IP address, but most people find it easier to remember www.youtube.com compared to 208.65.153.238. Now in the old days, you could often go to a search engine like google.com to find websites that you don't know the web address for. But nowadays, most web browsers allow you to use the address bar to not only type in the web address, but also the keywords that you want to search for. And it'll open up the web browser's default search engine with those keyword results. That's why we can also call the address bar a search bar. When navigating websites, you will click on a link to hyperlinks to go to new pages or type in new addresses of other websites to visit. That's when these two buttons come in handy. The left arrow or back arrow allows you to go back to the previous web pages you have visited. And then if you have gone back and you want to go forward to the page you came from, then the right arrow or forward button will get you there. Sometimes a web page will not load properly or maybe the information seems old. Then you can try the refresh button to reload the web page to get the latest version of that web page. Every browser has a home page set, the page that you start off with from the opening of your web browser. When you click on the home button, you'll be taken to that home page. You can go to your web browser settings to make sure that your home button is visible. You can also set what you want your home page to be or the page you always start off with. Just a hint though, if you ever notice your home page has changed without you making that change, you may want to check your settings as often spyware and malicious software like to change your browser's home page or default search engine to make you use their malicious web page. Most web browsers today have an option to open multiple windows in different tabs. You can right click on a link and ask to open in a brand new window, but often a new tab is easiest. This helps when you are working with information from multiple web pages. However, having more tabs open means that each tab is loading their web page information a little slower compared to having just one tab open. If you really like a website and you want to return to it later, you can save your favorite sites in the favorites or bookmark section depending on which browser you are using. Most use the star icon to add a web page to your favorites or bookmarks, and you can manage your bookmarks into folders and categories. You can access your bookmarks by either showing your bookmarks bar or favorites bar, or by going to the settings, those three dots there, and then going to bookmarks or favorites. And then if you go to your bookmark manager, here is where you can edit these details as well. 
What's nice here is that you can also export your bookmarks. This is a great way to back up these details so you can import them on another computer at work or if you get a new computer. Speaking of settings, there are lots of other settings you can use here and changes you can make to your browser like going to the downloads folder or managing the passwords or autofill data your browser uses. If you want to learn more about the added functionality to your browser, then check out our video on the difference between a plugin and an extension. If you haven't saved your website in your favorites or bookmark section and you really want to go back to it, then you can always go to your history settings. The history section is the section that contains all of the web pages you have visited in the past. Some joke that the history section is that one thing you might want your friend to delete for you if you pass away so no one can find out where you've been searching. Here you can go to a particular day to see what you have visited on the day or even month or you can search for a word that you might remember from the site to try find it. You can even use the history option to restore all the tabs and windows of web pages you have recently closed. This is especially useful if your computer is shut down unexpectedly. Now some browsers have another mode for private browsing. Some call it incognito or in private mode. When you are visiting websites in this mode, then they will not be stored in your history settings. Some will not store your cookie details or saved info from forms as well. So you could use this if you are wanting to be a bit sneaky. But remember, it only prevents your browser from storing what sites you visit. The information can still be accessed from the proxy server you are using if you are doing this at school or work. So you don't think that you are totally anonymous. The only real anonymousness is on your local machine's web browser history. So you have been warned. So hopefully you've learned a bit about web browsers and now have some tools in order to use them well when you visit your favorite web pages. For more computer terms, make sure that you follow us at Mr. Long Computer Terms. Click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you. Follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.